Hey family, how y'all doing today? I'm Stephanie Wade. I'm Habasia, helping your brothers and sisters in Africa. I'm also the Creole Griotis. Right now, I'm still in the Galveston, Texas, my hometown, where I am considered a quote, local, a BOI, born on the island. And yes, I do love my hometown. I love Texas. I don't know about it no place else. Because I love the Gambia too, y'all. Yeah, I do. Because it reminds me so much of Texas when I was growing up. Yeah, when it was segregated. I just saw everybody who looked like me for most of my time. That's all. Not that I didn't like somebody it's just that I didn't interact with them on a day-to-day -day basis you know because everything was separate I don't know about equal but separate and you really can't compare something if you don't know any different not that I'm an adult and I know the difference I tell you viva la difference because <laughs> Feeling like you part of a, a group makes one feel empowered, y'all. I know even just looking at things like magazines, TVs, etc. It's a whole different ball game. I tell you, growing up, when I went to the Booger T Theater, which was the colored theater, we did get to see some movies that actually were... Uh, movies with black people they had it was black and white but everybody in it was pretty much black <laughs> and the movie was just a movie y'all it just had people in it that looked like us if you somebody melanated of course and if not I'm, I'm just talking about things from my perspective not calling anybody out. I'm just telling my story. So anyway, as time changed, I went from feeling like part of a group to feeling like isolated. It was culture shock once integration happened. I was just one or two in a classroom, stuff like that, you know? Even now, I can visit the church that I grew up in, Holy Rosary, and guys, I'll be a minority even there. And it used to be a black Catholic church. Now it's just one of the holy family churches. And folks that look nothing like me are whispering all loud to each other, going, Oh, you ain't got your young seat today. <laughs> and I'm going, what seat did they buy? When they came here, this church was already built. It's like the oldest black Catholic church in Texas or something. You know, has a historical mark and all. So how anybody think that they have any particular seat for Sunday, I don't know. Makes no common sense to me. And rather than say anything, I just take a deep breath, exhale, and just say it. Nothing can bring back the hour of this, what, Splend in the Grass, like this movie I used to really like called Splend in the Grass. I understand what they mean now. But I can remember, y'all. I can remember. I've been watching all kind of stuff on YouTube today. Mm -hmm. It's been interesting, y'all. It almost make one day seem like the next. Very, very strange. Some people are talking about 
zombie apocalypse. Yeah, y'all. And they be serious, have a straight, straight face and everything. Talking about zombie apocalypse and Babylon falling and all this kind of stuff. And have thousands of followers, you know. And say Babylon has fallen, but still asking you for donations of money from Babylon. So I'm confused, y'all. And then it have people call themselves being woke, finding out that they thought they knew everything, but unfortunately they didn't. And sometimes even when you try to warn people, they don't get the message. So they end up making unwise choices built on not receiving the information. Sometimes information is not meant for everybody at the same time. But eventually somebody will get the information, whether it's too late or not. Sometimes you can salvage what you what you have and sometimes you can't sometimes it's just lessons learned and you just have to chalk it off too it was something you needed for your growth process while you still <laughs> on this planet you know i'm telling y'all guys I got pretty much overstimulated with information. It's like, I know I want to be part of the sustainable solution, but you wonder, how will you do that? Nobody can do anything just by themselves. You have to get other people involved. And the only way you can start that is by interacting with people who actually can hear what you have to say and actually work with you. You know, so all I can say is thank the Most High that in the motherland, you can pay somebody and afford to pay them for them to do some of the stuff you want to do. Even if just something simple as build a tiny house, you know, a tiny house. Even if it's one of those tiny houses that you make with recyclable products like bottles, whether it's glass bottles or plastic bottles and waste materials, you, it's doable, y'all. Making comp, using composting toilets, it's doable. So anyway, as I visualize the things that I'm gonna do when I get back to the, to the Gambia, watching some selective videos is good and definitely have to eliminate most of the videos. Like I said, the ones that's talking negative all the time and borrowing stuff from soap operas and television shows just to scare the what hell a lot of people. I just can't take that. My mind is just tired of all that stimulation. That's why I don't watch regular TV in the first place. Everything is about apocalypse. This is going to end. That is going to end. All I can say about that is, guys, nobody knows the hour. And no matter how much you have saved up, when it would be that time. Just like in those soap opera type shows on TV, it's going to always be people that's not prepared that's going to fight you to take what you got. And you uh, don't have endless supplies of stuff, whether it's food, bullets, or whatever. It's just not going to happen, y'all. We can be as sustainable as we are growing food all over the place. But if we don't get our neighbors to grow food, too, we got a problem. And if our neighbors grow food, that'll be fine as long as their neighbor grows food. And everybody understands they have to grow something. You know, and that we can share, but we have to keep growing, not give up and keep growing, keep sharing. Because if not, that's going to be our problem, trying to hoard stuff because people going to try to take what you got because everybody wants to survive. 
even if they didn't prepare for it. Like who can prepare an endless supply of water and food and everything? I've even seen people on YouTube talking about getting your generators together, your water purifiers together and all of that, be ready to leave in a moment notice. Eventually you'll run out of gas in your car, you know? So then you're gonna have to figure out how to manufacture your own petrol <laughs> or how to generate your own electricity so your car can run in, on electricity. And then it's gonna be all the people out there who's gonna try to take your vehicle from you. So how many people you gonna shoot down to keep driving to where, you know? So that scenario, I don't think is acceptable for me. I'll take it as a sci-fi movie and I will work on sustainable ideas that socially conscious where everybody lives you know but anyway guys I was just kicking it with y'all for a few minutes I'd like to hear what you thinking <laughs> tell me your stories tell me some of this unbelievable stuff people saying out there in them streets that you woke enough to understand that they just trying to manipulate you for your money. <laughs> Be woke, y'all. Stay woke. Don't let nobody scare the hell out of you. <laughs> Think, y'all. Do your own research, y'all. If it don't make common sense, because you already saw it in plenty, plenty, plenty movies on TV and elsewhere, know you being played, y'all. But anyway, do your research, keep your head clear, <laughs> take a deep breath, and know that nothing is going to happen to you that's not supposed to happen to you. And until next time, guys, peace, peace, power to the people, and I'm out, y'all. Bye.